Hello there! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma, aka Dilemma's Crossing, and we are here today on my spooky over the garden wall themed island of Pottsfield. And I've got a couple of fun speed builds in store for you today, so I'm very excited to show you what we're going to be building. Um, I was actually supposed to be working on Able Sisters and the last two villager homes on this front part of the island, but I didn't feel like doing that, and instead I felt like going ahead to my next build that I had planned for this island, which is a graveyard build in this area here where I'm currently standing. And then if you go up this incline, down the cliff right there there's going to be a train tracks with a train on it. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the show Over the Garden Wall, you will know that both the graveyard and the train tracks feature in the show, and they are quite important in terms of how Wirt and Greg actually ended up in the unknown in the first place. So this area is actually going to represent the boundary between the front half of the island, which is the real world, and the back half of the island, which is the unknown. So it's very exciting. I'm really excited to work on this build. Inspiration just really struck me today, and I felt like I just had to go ahead and build this instead of what I was originally planning. So that will be in my next build, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started with this one. Okay, so the first thing I started working on was actually the area that the train is going to go in. So here I am just laying down the train tracks code that I had downloaded, and um, as per usual all the codes will be in the description box below. And there's Lucky in the background wandering through my pumpkin storage, so making a little appearance in this video. So I decided I was just going to kind of contain the train so that it kind of looked like it was going between two cliffs, so like it's coming out of a tunnel and going into another tunnel. I've seen quite a few people do this, so using the castle gates as like the tunnel entrance and exits. And I also tried to use stalls to help me form the train. Um, this didn't end up working, so I do get rid of them later. I think the main reason it wasn't working was because of the angle at which you're viewing the train. Like I've seen a lot of other people make trains that are viewed from below. So they're up on like the second or third tier um, and the viewing point is on the first or second tier. Um, but for me, the main viewing point for this train is the tier above and the train is actually one level below. So the whole stall situation didn't look quite right. You'll see once the train sort of takes shape a bit more. Um, it just, it was too obvious that it, it wasn't that it was stalls and it wasn't a, a train. Um, and I also found this cutout sandy code that matches the plaza train. So that was good, that worked well, but yeah, this configuration here doesn't really stay. I'd also used the wood burning stove to try and represent like the engine. And I'd use that round street light to represent like a light, but I felt like that really wasn't working. So I tried replacing it with a wooden box with a lantern on top. Which, again, did not really work. Like, I think it would look fine if it was being viewed from below, or even from the same level, but because you're mainly viewing it from above, it just is too obvious that it's, you know, like the illusion doesn't really work. So um, I left the train for now and worked on filling in the cliffs to either side of where the train is going. Um, because if I'd left these unfilled, it would just bother me. So I just got that out of the way um, while I was trying to work out what to do about the train situation. There are obviously quite a narrow strip of cliffs here, so I pretty much had to like use a combination of trees and then decayed trees um, because a lot of trees weren't going to fit in that space. But I do really like using the decayed trees. I think it, it fits this aesthetic quite well. And I always like to use this leaf coat underneath them. So I've just been working on filling in that area. So we were just putting in a couple of the decayed trees here. And then I've still got to add a bunch of bushes, weeds, flowers, etc. Um, just, you know, good old filler stuff. And of course, I'm using um, third stage trees rather than full grown trees. So making sure to stunt those by planting fruit behind them. And yep, here we go in with our flowers. For the cliffs, I'm working with a combination of the black cosmos and the orange windflowers, and I kind of change it up and do a slightly different combination on the level below, but still the same colors. Pretty much all of the flowers I use on this island are orange, black. I do have some yellow ones and a few white ones here and there, but orange and black are definitely the main colors, it being a sort of 
spooky island after all. Um, just going in and filling in every tile there, making sure it's all, all filled in. At this point, I think I've probably already either reached or nearly reached the number of weeds you can have on an island and like and that they'll still grow because once you plant a certain amount um, the weeds stop growing so I've had to like go back and pick weeds to get other weeds to grow and then replant them um, it's a struggle but anyway just working on the other cliff now so doing pretty much the same thing um, just a combination of trees. Here I've used some of the second stage trees as well to kind of break it up a little because this cliff has a little bit more room on it than the other one. Um, and again, just putting down some code for where the decayed trees are going to go. I don't put them in until later because they take up so much space that you can't really get around them easily. And when you're working with these little strips of cliff, it can get quite annoying. You're constantly having to use your ladder to access different parts of it. So I learned my lesson from the other side and was saving the decayed trees till a bit later. We're going in with the same flower combination and of course lots of weeds. Because when in doubt, weeds and flowers. And here goes in that final decayed tree. And Bushes. Also gotta add bushes. And some coat on the ground, of course. Then here I'm just putting in um, some stone fence because I wanted to create sort of the illusion of this little strip here being a stone wall um, that Wirt and Greg would climb over. Um, to, and that's what they sort of fall over and then they're in the area with the train. I mean, it is called over the garden wall after all. So this is my representation of the wall that they climb over. And I'm just filling in that strip there. Um, I decided I was using tulips for the graveyard area, so I've used tulips here to sort of link this being sort of still in the graveyard, and then when you go over the wall is when it transitions to the unknown. So, and here I'm just filling in the area where the train is um, on that level, and you can see I'm using some different flowers now. I always like to break it up a little bit. Um, I definitely struggled a bit with with this area. Uh, so here I'm putting in some of the some of my nice brick code to sort of create a little path between these two ladders um, because I wanted to separate, I didn't want to use inclines here because I want to separate my villagers so that when the island is complete, the villagers in the dream address that are in the real world part of the island will remain in that part of the island and the villagers that I've assigned to roles in the unknown will remain in that part of the island. So that was my reason for making sure that um, the villagers can't actually, in the dream address, can't actually access the part of the island that their house isn't in. Um, and I definitely went back and forth a bit with some of this these filler areas as well. Here I'm just like putting some some codes and putting a vine bench on top, which this doesn't stay in quite the same configuration because um, I try and fit in a few stunted trees here, which I'm just doing now. I'm using these second stage ones so that they won't block the train too much, but will still provide some interest to this area, which is quite a narrow little area to work with here. sure we're stunting them using the nursery orange trees and then just weeds lots of weeds no one is seeing this area right behind the cliff so fill it with weeds and going in with some flowers more weeds and now I'm just putting that vine bench back into this spot here And the other side. So this side I used full grown trees because it's behind the train and I can add some height that way. I'm also swapping bushes for some reason. I think it's because I realized I had an azalea bush like up on the cliff directly above where I was about to plant a second azalea bush. So I just went and grabbed a hydrangea instead. But yeah, over here I put in full grown trees um, to add some height behind the train and fill in some of those gaps <laughs> um, that the, we've got with the stall situation and everything. Oh, and a shovel broke. 
it's it's not a build if a shovel doesn't break. Like if if your tool doesn't break, you're just you're just not trying hard enough. That's my philosophy anyway. I always go through probably at least one shovel when I'm building. And here I'm just putting in the fillers again, more flowers, plenty of weeds. Can never have too many weeds. And decayed tree go. And here's when I've finally decided that the train is not working. So I am removing the stalls and I end up just sticking with the face cutout standees. It's not a great train, it, you know, it, it's not a great illusion, but it's not even really that visible because you can't access the cliff above it except for kind of where the ladder is. So you can't really get that good of a look at the train anyway. It's just kind of meant to be there as like an Easter egg for the show. Well, I guess not an Easter egg. Um, uh, direct, you know, <laughs> it's directly relating to the show, but it's it's not the best train and that's okay. Um, so now I'm moving on to the graveyard, which is this area just below where the train is. And um, just putting in that brick path again, I felt like it worked quite well for this area. And I did fiddle around with the dirt path at first, which I kind of just cut out of the video because it just wasn't working. I feel like the brick worked a lot better. I wanted to use the, um, the ruined arch, I think it made a really nice sort of entrance for the graveyard. And then I also wanted to use the iron and stone fence, which I just thought was perfect for this build. Here I'm moving the tree because it was too far back. I'm gonna get a bush in to kind of block that awkward curve there. So yeah, I pretty much start by just putting in trees Figuring out tree placements. I think a lot of people do this. Um, I wanted this statue to be this, um, it's the Valiant statue, isn't it? To be a big part of this build, like kind of the centerpiece of the graveyard. So I was trying to work out where that was gonna go. And then of course we're putting in our decayed trees on top of the leaf code because it's a graveyard and it should look creepy and have decayed trees. So gotta include some of those. And I'm just kind of working on the fillers first to just kind of frame the space, I guess. Um, because the sort of outer bounds of it will mainly be trees, bushes, flowers, etc. Um, and then I can kind of work the gravestones around that. And I'm also just including a little bit of variety in tree height there with one of the third stage trees here. Here we are trying to work out where the second decayed tree is going to go. I actually end up moving it over one more space, but... And I start trying to figure out the gravestone placement, which... It was hard. I really struggled to figure out how I wanted these to go. I didn't want it to be too uniform, but I also didn't want it to be too random, so it was quite a balance. And I also tried to use a mix of, like, all the different types. So the western style stone, the zen style stone, and then I used like the stone tablets turned backwards as well just for some variety. So definitely including a good mix here but it made it difficult to kind of work out exactly how I wanted everything to be placed. I mean I am really happy with where it ended up. It just took a bit of fiddling to get there. So here I'm moving over the leaf coat because I realized I wanted to fit another western style stone there and it wasn't gonna work unless I moved it over. And deciding that placement's not working. Again, didn't want it to be too uniform, so I didn't want all of the gravestones to be facing the same exact way, so I wanted to include some of these ones that were facing sideways instead of front ways. And I also wanted to use a variety of the I mean, not too huge a variety, but a little bit of variety of the different options. So I've used like the mossy one and the standard one. Oh, and you can see Grizz Grizzly down there briefly. Um, I haven't actually mentioned yet that I have Grizzly on the island now. I do mention it in my outro, which was filmed before this voiceover. So look forward to that. I'll explain how I got him. But yes, Grizzly's on the island now and he decided to make an appearance just then. Here goes that other Western style stone. And it's filler time. So I decided to use the black and white tulips for the graveyard. I just thought 
They looked pretty and the kind of thing that you would have in a graveyard. Um, it didn't seem right to include like orange. I just preferred the black and white color palette for this area. Getting those bushes in place. Oh, and changing my mind as I regularly do. And more flowers and weeds and bushes. Anyway, I hope everyone is having a good December so far. Um, mine has been eventful. Uh, <laughs> you might be wondering why I've taken so long to get this video out. It's because there's been a lot going on in my life lately. Um, I started a new job, which has been good, but I also am going through a breakup currently, so that's partly why this has taken a while. I haven't really felt in the mood to, you know, edit and record and do things, but it's all right, I'm getting back on my feet, but it's I can't promise regular videos at the moment. My uploads will probably be a bit more sporadic until I sort of adjust, um, get back to some normalcy. So yeah, it might be a little bit sporadic for a bit, but that's okay. And I've just decided here that I'm going to put the brick code in the graveyard proper to just kind of fill some more space and have something for the statue to be resting on. So I'm just fiddling with that. I do change it a little bit um, from this, but not a ton. And then this little strip right here at the front, I wasn't really sure what to do with. I didn't want to have another fence there because we've got the stone fence, the iron and stone fence right, right behind it. So I decided to just plant more flowers, but like, you know, put them on a dirt code so it looked like it was a little little patch that was specifically there, like a little garden, so that's what I'm doing. I think it frames the area nicely. And then just filling in this little space around the tree. With, you guessed it, bushes, flowers, and weeds. And here I'm just adjusting the code a little bit because I wanted to add a couple more of the tulips to the build. And we're nearly done at this point. Um, just decided I didn't like that flower there, so I just put another weed there. And then I'm just filling in this back area behind all the gravestones on the left side. Again, bushes, flowers, weeds. I'm one of those people that kind of feels compelled to fill every tile. But that is actually the end, so let's get into the beauty shots. Okay, well that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed both of these builds. I definitely struggled a little bit more with the train than I was expecting to, but you know, it is what it is. I'm still happy enough with the result. It's only... it's not even that visible to be honest, so <laughs> I don't mind too much that, you know, it is a little awkward looking. Um, but yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention as well in my intro that we actually now have all 10 of our dreamies on this island. Um, I actually went and, okay, I'll be honest, I got sick of villager hunting. So I went and picked up Henry from a treasure island and then I actually went ahead and bought Grizzly's Amiibo, which just arrived yesterday. So I have him on the island, which is very exciting. We've got all 10 of them. Oh, and you may notice another new face. I've brought Wirt onto the island. Haven't brought Greg on yet, but I will do so. Um, so we are making progress, slowly but surely. And it's a good thing we have Grizzly now because his little area is going to be the first one in the back half of the island, given that Grizzly is representing the woodsman and we meet the woodsman in the first episode of Over the Garden Wall. So he's got to be who we run into first once we have crossed over into the back half of the island. 
But anyway, that's all for today. I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed. All right, bye everyone.